Now this one is just displaying, already restarted. That uh, we're at 50% overclock in Optron 165, stock 1.8 gigs, so we're at 2.7. At 300 times 9, locked multiplier, locked voltages. Can't turn the voltage up or down, won't let us. It's uh, one of their bottleneck prevention, I guess, you know, it's just something that they do with it. And uh, we want to show you again the hardware, and then we might do a quick pump failure test just to let you know that we're pretty serious about our water cooling. Right now we're running 90 core 2, 73 core 1, they jump around. Overall 81 degrees processor temperatures. Motherboard is 61. It's about what it is in the shop, room temperature. Cold out today. So we got the uh, benefits of cold air, luckily. Um, although I have ran this at the shop at 75 degrees, but with all the fans going, case on it and everything, so you know, I had to help with some fan support. But today we have lack of fan support. We actually haven't turned down halfway. So let's take a look at the hardware. This is what we built. This is our machine. That's the heat sink. We poured that out of the little room. Thermal take fans, they're good ones. We'll turn it up so you get an idea of how slow she's going right now. And there's your noise. That's your thermal take. Bam. Now we got an actual airflow of 50%, so we're guaranteed to play a game. You got a reservoir, hard drives, radiator. It's the same thing as the first one. Well, this time we're going to do a pump failure test. Well, here's the cord. It's right here, goes all the way underneath where the pump's at, and we're going to pull it at 50%. There it is, right there. Now we're not afraid to test our ingenuity. Granted, we got some cold temperatures in the uh, shop, but what are you going to do? Again, we're at 50% overclock. We're not overclocking chipsets, none of that, just the processor. Right out of the core. There's your proof. We'll watch your temperatures go back up. Whoops. Still unplugged. There it is. Yeah, about 60. Yeah. Not bad, huh, guys? For that myself. What we're doing now is we're taking off the fan, off the heat sink. Remember, the water pump's turned off right now, so there's no flow. Oh, yeah, I'll show you the cord again. Very gently remove the fan. I'm not scared. Just don't want to put my finger in the fan. And then we'll turn down the other one. There we go. Now the other one's virtually off. It's probably running about 1100 RPM, which isn't pushing much air. That's the actual top of the heat sink. We have it zip tied to the motherboard because we really have a real good way to fasten it, but you know. Of man's good grace and ingenuity, they invented those. And uh, those are the way, you know, runs from the top, comes out the top. So, and that's that's it right there. CPU idle, 82 degrees, no fan. Well, no. we'll get some uh, good benchmarks out of Everest, that's for sure. So we'll go down, we'll run a quick benchmark out of Everest, and that'll probably use 100% of the processor. And let's see if I remember how to do it. Quick report, H HTML. And this will even give you a comparison of other processors that this is going to be running with, which is kind of nice. I, I like Everest Ultimate Edition. They did a real nice number when it came out this one. Anybody that's a true gamer overclocker would appreciate it. Our test is done. And there's our score.
Right up there, a 2X core dupe, 2 dual, 6700. They're running DDR2800 at 2.666 gigs. Their score is 5417. We're running a 2.7 Optron 165 with DDR386 SD RAM. Clock time is 2.5337. 5196 is our score. That's your your comparison. The one next one under it's the Athlon 4200 Plus at 2.7 on N Force 4 with DDR 400 at 3338 clock timings, and their score was only 4262.